The cost of living crisis will be officially over for you if you watch this because there's a consumer expert with money saving advice in the sun. Hi, it's me again and I quite enjoy making these ones lately because oh, it's just so much nonsense involved, isn't there? Especially in the sun. These always seem to be in the sun and look at this headline, look. I'm a consumer expert. Here's 23 money saving hacks to help you save big in 2023. Yeah, I'm excited because I'm feeling the pinch myself here quite a lot, you know, so I'm excited about this. This is going to solve my cost of living crisis if I follow these 23 money saving hacks. And when did everything become a life hack? Why couldn't it just, what happened to top tip or advice? Why does everything have to be a life hack? Anyway, that's just me being old. Let's have a look at some of these. Digital budget planner. Start the year off by investing in a digital budget planner money saving hacks and he wants to start the year off by you buying something you don't need. Top advice once again. You don't need a digital budget planner. There's loads of free apps that do it. Personally, I wouldn't put all my financial information into some free app. So I made a spreadsheet. What's wrong with that? It gives me something to do at night. I make a spreadsheet. I know what I've got to spend. I know what I have spent. I know what I've spent it on. Don't buy something if you're giving money-saving advice. Money-saving advice isn't buying something, is it? Get a smart meter. Having the physical amount in front of you can let you see clearly how much is being spent on gas and electricity. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Many of you out there do not like smart meters at all. And you give me loads of grief for having one. I don't have one through choice. I don't have a choice about it. I'm in a rental property. It's in the contract. I have to have the smart meter. But that said, having it. You do see how much you're spending and it does come, I'll have a look, like if I'm in working from home all day and it's saying like 12 to 15 quid by the night time, I'm like, yeah, go easy on that a bit tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, having a smart me will save you money, but uh, the quality of your living. I don't like it. I, don't, I look at it all the time. It's next to my microwave. I should move it really. Start a side hustle. The savvy way to earn cash in the new year is to earn more and spend less by starting a side hustle. Yeah, I think everybody needs to do something like that now. Everyone can make a bit of money on the side. I say my niece has recently started delivering Chinese food. I've recently started delivering kebabs in my local town. So if, if you live in my local town, you'll soon know about it if you order a kebab because you'll have me knocking on your door asking for a tip. Eh? But I also sell stock photography and I, I don't lie, I make a few quid off this channel as well. And all of that helps me, helps me keep my head above water. So yeah, everyone out there should be thinking about what they can do. Stock photography is a good one, but it takes a long time to make money out of it. Many people have asked me about it. It takes a long time. You've got to get thousands of pictures before you start making a, like a dribble of money a month. I've been doing it for, for years, but I still don't make that much off it. You'd be surprised how little I make off it. It's more of a hobby than anything. Delivering kebabs. My niece delivering Chinese, she does three nights a week, four hours a night, and she makes more off that than she does her full-time job. How's that work? So yeah, it was something to look at, isn't it? Entering free giveaways, set measurable saving goals, shop during sale events, and book your 2024-25 holidays now. Don't bother with the free giveaways. All they want is your email address and they're gonna absolutely cane you with emails. If you want, got nothing better to do at night, set up a separate email address that you only use for this sort of thing and do it, but I wouldn't waste my time. Would not waste my time. Set measurable saving goals, yeah, all well and good if you've got enough money left over to save. That's the problem, no one has at the minute, have they? Uh, shop during sale events, yeah. Fair enough, things are a bit cheaper on Saturday, but not always. The Black Friday was turned out to be a scam, didn't it? With prices going up two weeks before so that they could slash them on hot pots and stuff during Black Friday. Shop around, don't just shop at sale events. Shop around, buy used things on eBay. Book your 24, 25 holidays now. Well, you don't know what's gonna be happening in 24, 25. We might not be allowed out of our house again, do we? I'll be bugging if I'm gonna book a holiday in for two years time. Now, no way, no way. What if prices fall before then? It's possible, unlikely, but possible. Shop around for deals, join community groups for free activities, sign up for loyalty schemes, book free cancellation trips, and sign up for email subscriptions. Shop around for deals is very similar to shop during sale events. So your 23 ideas is now down to 22. Join community groups for free activities. Yeah, fair enough, if you live in a nice community. I don't, they don't like me in my community. Don't know why actually. 
Sign up for loyalty schemes. Yeah, we've all got a club card so Tesco's can spy on you. I do use it. I do use it. I think I've got... Hang on. I spend a lot on diesel, as you know, because I've got a Range Rover. Let's have a look see how many club card points I've got. So £6 worth of vouchers in about two months of buying diesel and uh, lager at Tesco's. The only reason I have the club card, I'm not bothered about the points, is I have the club card deals on at the minute. The other day I bought a 10-pack of Stella for eight quid, which is a club card price. Quite pleased with that. Bought two. Treat yourself. Why not? Sign up for email subscriptions. Yeah. I don't know about that. I don't go in for all of that. I get too many emails anyway. If you want to save a few quid on the stuff that you buy, and it's got sites like topcashback.com are really good for stuff like that, aren't they? That's what I would suggest. Freeze leftovers from Sunday roast. Do you need to be told that? Do you need to be told to save your leftovers nowadays? The 50-30-20 split. A popular TikTok trend from 2022 is one to follow through in the new year. When the monthly wage comes through, allocate 50% of it on bills and essentials, 30% on leisure, and 20% on savings. How much do you think we earn? Seriously, 50% on it on bills and essentials. I know many people whose more than 50% of their salary goes on just their rent. So how can you budget for that? 30% on leisure, good luck. With I'd love to spend 30% of what I make on leisure. I've got no chance. And 20% of it on savings. So everything you earn, you've got to put 20% of it on savings. It's a wonderful thing to do. Save for your retirement for a rainy day, all of that. Who has the money to do that at the minute? Not me, that's for sure. Use a credit card. Don't use a credit card. Don't, don't do it. Hey, you can get cash back and it's interest free and there's all these amazing things you can do to help build your credit report and all of that. It's a slippery slope. They know it's a slippery slope. That's why they give you these free cash back offers and all this nonsense that you can get with credit cards because they know it's a slippery slope. They know that one month you're going to want that pair of jeans or something's going to go wrong with your car and you're going to slap it on the credit card and make the minimum payments or something and then it's going to snowball. Do not use one. Do not use one. I don't use one. I don't have one anymore. I just refuse to have one. If I can't afford to buy it, I won't buy it. And if it's something I want, I'll put a bit away a week where I have it spare. And then the thing I do buy, if I do buy it in the end, because it's actual money then, but if I do buy it, I look after it and cherish it for more. What's that bloke? What's that bloke I watch here on YouTube? What's his name? Ah, Dave Ramsey. There it is. If you haven't heard of Dave Ramsey on YouTube here in the search box after watching this, obviously, type in the Dave Ramsey show in the search thing and have a look. And he will tell you everything you need to know about credit cards. I watch a lot of his stuff. He's helped me get my head above water and get myself out of debt following his free advice from his radio show. So worth a look, worth a look. Have spend free weekends, use fake away recipes, notepad mystery box, check for tax rebates, take part in subscription trials. Yeah, most of my weekends I try to be a spend free weekend. That's not a special thing that I try to do to challenge myself. I can't afford to spend much on weekends. Use fake away recipes. Yeah, I know I do. I I'd quite like a bit of cooking. So yeah, fair enough on that one. Notepad mystery box. What's that? Write down different amounts you'd like to put into your savings on separate pieces of paper and put them in a bowl. Every Sunday, draw out a different amount to determine how much money you will be putting into your savings that week. This is a great way to save little and often. Just remember to keep it realistic. But I'm glad they put that bit at the end there because if you ask me to write down amounts I'd like to put in my savings account, it wouldn't be 10 or 20 quid, would it? Be fortunes. But every Sunday when I pull one out and it says, put 20 grand in your savings account, I'm going to want to hang myself. <laughs> so yeah, I'm glad they said keep it realistic at the end. Is that a good one? I don't know. As long as you do keep it low amounts or whatever you can afford, maybe, maybe. The one I use, my bank account has that rounding up thing, right? So if I spend, I don't know, £6.50 on my card, it rounds it up to the nearest quid above it and puts that in the savings account and you get good rates on that. You get more rates on that than you do on your normal savings account. Oh, it's only pence and everything. Granted, but it does add up. It does add up. I did it for a year and it was about a grand in there at the end of the year. And um, I used that to, to buy my new camera for this. That I, well, I, I still would have had that grand otherwise, but I wouldn't have noticed it. I mean, it's a good idea. If your bank does it, it's usually free. Get a rounding up account. It's better than a notepad mystery box because you don't have to do anything. Take part in free subscription trials. 
It's just a way to get loads of junk email and loads of junk mail to your house. If you live in certain parts of the country, there are um, like clinical trials and stuff you can take part in for cosmetics and for, I don't know, medicines and stuff like that. Not that I would personally do that, but have a look into that. Type in into Google. Oh, my sister does it. She does a lot of it. Um, type in into Google, get paid to try products or something like that. You'll find them. Stick to non-branded food, put locks on banking pots and stick to the plan. I'd love to have some Heinz beans in my cupboard, but I don't. I've got the little, the little beans and sausages. I like beans and sausages. I ain't got any Heinz. I ain't any Heinz ones for ages. Put locks on banking pots. Virtual banks often allow for saving pots to be locked and only accessible on certain dates. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, but what if there's an emergency and you've got to get at your savings? That's what a rainy day pot's for, isn't it? When it starts raining. And you need to be out there. I don't know about that. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Stick to the plan. Just don't stick to the budget for January and forget about it for the rest of the year. Make it a personal goal that you'll stick to savings targets so that the rewards will be greater by the end of the year. Yeah, what I will say is that a little bit of money each week or month does add up to a half-decent rainy day pot. Like I said, I, I think it was a year, it might have been 18 months it took on that rounding up thing on my bank. And I got about a grand. And that was handy to have. I was put it there, it wasn't for anything else. That was my money that I'm going to use for something for me. But you could use it for whatever you wanted to. Can you? I bought a camera with it. Not all of it, obviously. A grand for a camera. I'm not mental. I've still got half the money there. I bought a second hand one off eBay. But yeah, anything you can put away for a rainy day is good. But the problem is, with all this, people don't have that much money to put away for a rainy day. What was that 50-20 nonsense? Where was that? 50-30-20, yeah. So 50% of your salary to go on bills and essentials, so your rent and that, and probably food. So 50% of your money's got to cover your rent or your mortgage, your council tax, uh, I don't know, your utility bills, your internet, your food, and then 30% on leisure, which sounds excessive to me, and 20% on that absolute nonsense. But then it did come from TikTok. And it's the kids. The kids don't know what it's like to be like us or responsible. <laughs> I'm old again. I'm so old, am I? I do like talking about the money saving advice from the sun, though. It's always an expert. John Rogers, who was the consumer expert for this one. Let's, let's see what else John Rogers has done. What's he got here? He doesn't look like a consumer expert because he's got one here about giving up a seat to a woman on a bus. There's a World War One style video. I'm a female carpenter. I'm a driving expert. Oh, he's a driving expert now as well. Anyway, let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. That way, hopefully I'll see you in another video again soon. Ta-da.